Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you a new campaign of Ultimate General American Revolution. This is the full United States campaign. We will be playing from start to finish, get an entire campaign out of this. Uh, this should be basically the last test run of the game before it releases onto Steam as a full game. So theoretically, what you will see through this campaign will be mostly what is going to be launched in the Steam release. Now, obviously this game is an early access, so things will probably change, mostly balance tweaks, I imagine, but there are ideas that we have seen the uh, seen the developers add into the game over and over again, and uh, or we, we have seen them <laughs> add ideas over and over again, and that'll be pretty exciting. Um, I do need, I, I didn't expect that army down there to get to Newport before we got to Providence. So here we have the Battle of Concord and Lexington. You have the choice to fight it or the choice to not fight it. Now I think um, uh, Pandakraut said that there should be a rep gain on fighting it, but unfortunately how uh, the coding was that, that got missed here. Um, but going into the future, you don't have to fight this to obtain, I, I think you get a militia regiment and some weapons after this battle. And as far as understanding, you don't actually have to fight this battle, which is great, because if you're like me, you've uh, you've fought this battle a few times. But let's dive into Concord and Lexington and uh, show those redcoats what's up. Okay, on the battlefield, we're just going to try and get our troops into position, see, uh, see if we can kind of delay the redcoats from getting to the armory right away. We will get massive amounts of reinforcements throughout this battle. The British are much, much better than us, but... You know, we have that American resolve that's, uh, that show them who's boss. Now you can see there are a lot of redcoats. I believe there are some grenadiers. I think those are grenadiers right there. I could be wrong. Yeah, those are grenadiers right there. Um, and then we'll fire a volley. Probably a second volley. Maybe even a third volley, and then we'll retreat. All right. Let's get the heck out of Dodge, move you guys over here, and yes, we are we are definitely going on a little bit of a fast forward mode here, and that is just to get everything sorted out while our forces move on to the battlefield, and to save a little time in the video as this part can can get a little little tedious. Okay, our guys are outnumbered. Let's uh let's fall back. They just took a nasty volley in the rear. Nobody likes taking it in the rear, that is for sure. All right, let's move these guys up. Um, you saw a little couple problems clicking right there, but that's that's perfectly fine. And then move these guys. Let's move these guys probably just into, into there and then grab you all. Keep moving up into these positions, and I need more men to i think they removed a barricade from this now i'm looking at it it looks looks like they did let's uh just get a bunch of men into fortifications that and then have our skirmishers out on the flanks hopefully the british don't um let's let's start slowing this down a little we can cheese the british just a little because the british love 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 to charge no that's not do anything like that and then let's draw these guys in a little over here great so we have a decent amount of men in the fortifications we'll see what happens over here though because the british will probably charge the fortifications and the british they just have overwhelming numbers they will they will probably win a lot of those charges if they get them off so we just have to basically hold out for the mass horde of militia and that's basically how you win this battle um it can it can feel a little lopsided at first because the british are way way better than you and there's a couple things at hand here if you look at the weapons we we have civilian muskets on all of our men uh, in game terms civilian muskets are trash they're really 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 bad so um, it's very imperative as the campaign moves forward that you you try your hardest to to upgrade to like the U.S. muskets and such. Those guys are pushing into us pretty hard. Um, yeah, and they're going to take out that militia over there, unfortunately. 
It's kind of trying to uh, trying to see what is going on in the grand scheme of things over here. There we go. There's the beefy units. There are some absolutely monstrous uh, units that come to aid. I like that. That unit out in the open over there. Um, and then one of our units did surrender. They have changed the surrender flag, so it looks a little bit different. I can't grab this unit yet. There we go. Those guys are retreating. Unfortunately, our min Minutemen... Minutemen. I, I said that wrong in the last campaign. Um, they're... They're not doing too well. And uh, neither are our regular Joe Militia. And that's that's perfectly fine. They're, they're not meant to hold up against, you know, formed redcoats, even though throughout the history of the American Revolution, they did do a decent job of that. So not to take away from the colonial cause, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is a problem, and we, they are definitely capturing a bunch of our men over on that flank. And uh, we will, I mean, we'll try our best to <laughs> to try and recapture the armory. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, not the easiest task with the forces we are given, but we will do our best. Um, and then, what are you guys doing? Okay, we should, uh, okay, they've... We recaptured them, but it doesn't really matter because they're they're on they're full on routing. So let's let's get these guys forward and see if we can push back the redcoats. We still hold the the magazine itself, but we need we need to do better. Actually, can you guys um move over here? move over here like so there we go there is the blue tide you play warhammer 40,000 it very much feels like an orc horde and let's continue pushing forward and um, see what we can do against these redcoats that have kind of overextended just a little and see what we can do on that flank and you know a thousand more militia running in you can see our militia is retreating left and right they are not very good whatsoever can you guys melee into them and then we need even more guys moving in to the fight we probably need to merge some units that's probably something that needs to happen sooner rather than later um okay they're retreating again and you can see the british are definitely punching through the center but this large force here should help out tremendously, and we're going to push those guys back over here. Can these two... I would like these two to merge when possible. And, yeah, they've broken the center over there, so not good. We should put some guys on hold. I just realized that hold is a great feature in this game for your men because you gain 15% cover. And that's, uh, that's really important in this game. That basically means 15% less casualties. Let's combine these forces over here. Um, one thing is they have two generals. We have no generals. Generals really, really help out with your morale. I don't know why you guys are blocked. And then we really need to get on to their flank. So let's see if we can do that with those guys. Um, probably just need to push these guys up the center. And we need more guys to... Can, can these 250 charge into them? That would be fantastic. Uh, overwhelming numbers is kind of the name of this scenario. Let's move these guys back into the fray. Move these guys back into the fray. And we'll probably have all of those guys um, group up. We'll have you group up too. Yeah, things are... Not going well in the center, but we will try our hardest. We did route one unit. Uh, we did capture one. Uh, they're going back and forth of whether or not they want to surrender. There we go. Two British units surrendered. Perfect. Let's get these guys moving out. Let's have you guys shoot over there. Now, if you play on hard difficulty, I'm pretty sure the AI has 
Let's charge into them that has cannons. And that makes this scenario even more difficult. Alright, let's, uh, let's push these guys out over here. Let's have you guys move up into there. We are charging forward. We got had another unit surrender, which is perfect. Another unit surrender. There we go. Things are changing. Uh, things are looking much, much better. Let's have you guys move into that position. You guys move into that position. You guys can fall back a little. And we'll have you guys regroup. And you guys can group up. And get on their flank. And that is going to be the name of the game there. I don't know if that's going to cause flank fire right there. Probably will, and it'll probably ruin the entire plan we had. Let's move you guys over here. Alright. Um, need you guys to shoot into them. Uh, wow, they got a volley off. Didn't kill a single man. Uh, they need to go back to gunnery school for sure. We have lots of exhausted forces. That is something to keep in mind. Let's move you guys back into that formation, and these militia are doing well. Those guys are exhausted. Um, exhausted men, definitely not as good as fresh men. Your stats, um, especially your melee skills, do suffer. Let's, uh, let's give them the bayonet, even though the civilian musket doesn't have a, ba a bayonet. That's uh, kind of what it represents, is it doesn't have the bayonet ring. Let's go take these uh, fortifications, though. All right, over here we have no condition. But you can see that we are we are doing much, much better. Um, we have pushed the Redcoats basically out of position or off of the off of the magazine itself. And we are taking it to them and we have some large units now defending the barricade. So that's kind of how this battle has gone for me every single time is at the very beginning it feels very very sketchy and then as the battle continues on it starts to feel better and better but um don't get too discouraged at the very beginning because it is it is very very rough at the beginning it, it does not feel good whatsoever let's keep those guys there uh, at gunpoint right presumably have some men uh keeping the british prisoner over there and then just really pushing them back over here. And you can see Percy and Smith with very, very few redcoats left. In fact, we'll probably um, probably start speeding things up, I would imagine. Yeah, there used to be a barricade right here, so that's interesting that they took that barricade away from this battle. There have been many, many changes to the game, though, so it doesn't surprise me that... Uh, Things like that would get changed. However, um, this battle you will see that the unit models for the Americans is not the standard unit model that you have in game. So that just keep that in mind. This is not what your militia look like. And um, hopefully one day they will update this battle and we will get the the newer militia and Minutemen models. I would I would greatly appreciate that. That would be really cool. Um, let's continue absolutely hammering. The British, and then these prisoners can go into the POW pool over here. Um, let's move you. Actually, yeah, let's just keep you guys over here. Why not? And just uh, keep on pushing. That is generally the name of the game in these, is try to wrap up the enemy forces as much as possible and shatter them, get them to, to surrender like that over there. And the British. Uh, in game, I, I will point out, there is a mass route feature for the enemy. It just doesn't seem like in this scenario that mass route feature is there, which that's fine. This is it's kind of like a tutorial without any tutorial features. There's hope in the future that this will turn more into a tutorial as opposed to the battle it is now. But, you know, for uh, for what it is, it is a fine battle. Um, you know, who doesn't like to play with a horde of American militia? Alright, who are you shooting? You're shooting their general. That's not very gentlemanly-like of you. It's very American, though. 
And then let's continue encircling Percy and Smith. Could be a name, right? Percy Smith. Be like the one of those names where it's a double. All right. Uh, looks like we could finish the battle. So let's let's do that. And um, yeah, that was a you know it's it's a fun little battle there. We had. 3,140 Colonials versus 1,200 Regulars. We lost 969 and 42 of them were captured, but we killed 820 of theirs and captured 278, so not too bad. There is the Battle of Concord. Well, forget everything I said at the beginning of the coding is wrong, you don't get the reputation. There is the reputation for playing the battle and winning. Uh, you know, I, I, I thought because it wasn't on the early screen that you didn't get the reputation. I know that that was something that Pandacrat was looking into, so he must have added it into the hotfix. Greatly appreciate all the hotfixes they have, but that is awesome. So, what we have going down, going on down here is we have... No, actually, I just did the, uh, I did the complete wrong thing there. I double-clicked Providence. That means they will charge. And then I don't know where... Oh, there's Newsom. I'm trying to get Newsom over to Leicester without, you know, getting hit by the Salem, uh, Salem garrison. And then I was building up a unit in Hartford just to max out what we have available. Hopefully we can get a battle going right here. So then Georgie can go down to Newport and help out those guys over there. So this battle be, will be very quick, very decisive because we have eight companies to their two, even though they are much more well armed than we are. Here we are on the battlefield speeding things up and the British generally will come to you and uh, I'm just positioning our men so that we can best crush the Redcoats as soon as possible and uh, we will be moving our forces forward momentarily and that way we can surround them and hopefully capture as many of them as possible. Now they did change how the maps work so Things are a little bit further apart. You saw there that the British uh, took a little while to come into view, um, whereas previously, it could uh, the British could basically be right on top of you when you start playing. So, um, some much needed improvements there that were greatly appreciated. Absolutely love love the changes they made there. Um, really appreciate when they they make the game better in those regards. All right, so let's place all of you on hold. Um, George Washington, and yes, we are playing the life of George Washington, as you have noticed by the title here. Quicksilver, he uh, he performed admirably, admirably, admirably. Wow, I can't talk today. He performed amazing in his last two campaigns, and uh, we have decided to give him a break. He he is no longer needed. And he gets to retire momentarily. However, I have a feeling that he'll be back in the future. And it's not going to be good for the Americans. I feel like in the future there might be some dastardly deeds going on. He might be pulling a Benedict. And uh, you might see him looking rather red. At least that's, that's my theory on Quicksilver in the future. He, he might be a turncoat. Um, for those of you that don't know, I I am an American, but I was born in the United Kingdom, so uh, my whole family is English, so I, I do have a little soft spot, soft spot for the British, and uh, I am super excited for whenever the British campaign comes to this game, and uh, we will be playing the good, I mean, the, uh, the British when they are available. All right, Washington needs to go down, and uh, why did these guys charge into them? Oh no, that's too many casualties. So <laughs> we'll fight this battle. Hopefully our morale isn't terrible, and hopefully our troops aren't on top of each other. I probably did a double click, and that is completely my fault. All right, we have this little tree area here, and we will take advantage of it as George Washington tries to ride as hard as he can to get back to his troops. Hopefully these guys... Um, actually, this is not... Is these trees are not going to be what we what we need here. So let's uh let's hit hold. Yes, we got the hold off right before right before those red coats uh got their volley, I think. One of our unit is in cover, the other is not. 
and uh, we are very good at moving and firing. That is the Revolutionary War tactic. We are, we are the superior race in that regard. Come on, George Washington, get over here. We need your moral support, or is it morale? The the morals is where we shoot the generals, or lack of morals. All right, charge, charge. We we click that wrong. That's something I'm going to have to get used to. I think they changed uh, where you click on units a little bit. So um, I'm not entirely used to all of the clicking. Uh, can we can we go in and melee you guys maybe? Um, and you know what? Uh, let's just swarm them. I, I think the British unfortunately are, uh, they might route one of our units uh, because one it's exhausted. There we go, yeah, it routed. And uh, we're not, you know, we're not the best with our civilian muskets, that is definitely for sure. Let's see if we can shoot them to pieces as they flee, uh, and as our guys flee. No captures there, which is rather unfortunate, and we're not going to chase them down. Alright, so we are capturing Providence. Oh, we got them to surrender. That never happens. That's fantastic. Usually that army parades through our lands and is like kind of a mini thorn in our side for quite some time, so... I don't know what you guys are doing, but I told you to uh, take Providence, and let's uh, hope that that is the case there. Still need this unit to try and get to Leicester. Uh, unfortunately, with the, what are you, what are you guys doing? Take Providence, please. They they don't want to cooperate. That is that is for sure right now. Um, let's move you guys up over here. We took Newport. It's interesting that we took Providence before. Newport, or we put, took Newport before Providence. Don't listen to what I say, but rather what I do. Or maybe you shouldn't. Maybe that plan is also terrible. Yeah, we're uh, a couple misunderstandings here. It's taken us much longer to take Providence than we would like. Um, but we are going to move this army all the way out to Middleborough right away. And hopefully we get, usually we get a bunch of militia for winning the Battle of Concord, at least I thought we did. And then we are going... Oh, nobody's in Middleborough. Perfect. Alright, you guys go there. You guys go back to Providence. And there we go, Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army. So this is... Um, well, you get this anyways, but I believe these are the rewards for a militia unit ready for action in Leicester. I believe uh, these rewards you get for winning the Battle of Concord and Lexington, but you always get the Commander-in-Chief Department, which is rather nice. I could be wrong on this part, but um, it is, you know, we love all of our militia and all of our rifles, that is for sure. And then we capture Providence. There's another 10 reputation, which is great. And then we need to research the Engineer Department uh, in the Commander-in-Chief Headquarters, and we'll show that in a moment. So we are going to take Middleborough. Let's uh, look at this. So, George Washington, Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army. Um, things to look for. Salary bonus here. Units morale is at 0%. The higher salary, the more morale they have, which is good. Um, so if you start seeing that you have a lot of uh, deserters, increasing their salary is a way to stop the desertion rates. Uh, bounty is how many people are willing to be recruited. So, essentially... If you need more recruits, increase your bounty and you get more recruits from your cities. If your bounty is low, less people want to join the Continental Army. Um, so we are going to research the engineering department because we have a quest for it. And this is important. They changed how reputation works so you can no longer fast track technology until there is less than 20 days. That being said, all of these early department ones are about 10 days or less. And we will fast track these immediately because this is the biggest boost to your early game. Unlocking those allows you to, well, like build buildings in your settlements and things like that. So where is, okay, Delaney, you need to go over here. Um, don't let the Redcoats find you. Newsom, can you please get to Leicester eventually? And then we are taking Middleborough and George, Georgie, um, I don't need you in the garrison, I just need you watching Boston, keeping an eye out for those dastardly redcoats, and then these guys are going to stay at Hartford for the time being, and you'll see why later. 
Um, we've basically given up Portsmouth, poor Portsmouth, but, um, you know, you're just not in a good position. You can definitely hold Portsmouth, um, especially if you go for the Navy route. That is definitely a decent or a good idea, but I just find that how I play, uh, I don't have the resources to defend Portsmouth, and they always send an army from Boston or Salem up to Portsmouth anyways to destroy you. So here we go. Engineering, engineering department has been research. We can now develop our infrastructure and economy, which is really, really important. And we more importantly got 10 rep from that. Well, it's not more important. Um, it's very important to unlock that department. That is for sure. And to properly unlock the department, we need to assign a Ooh, not very good officer. We'll give you Samson Burn, and then you will unlock Research Speed over here. Now, good old Georgie, we're going to do the Quartermaster Department. We're going to sign, and we're going to fast track once again. So you can see that the Engineers of the Revolution, it takes 34 days to unlock. We don't have the fast track option. As soon as that hits 20 days, you do have the option to fast track. But I would recommend fast tracking all of your departments. And then other certain milestones like unlocking Benedict Arnold is a good one to fast track and a few other things. Um, and keep in mind that once you go under 15 reputation, uh, you have a timer to get it above 15 reputation or you lose the entire campaign. And that is to quote a very prestigious historical figure myself, no bueno. April 23rd, St. George's Day for the United Kingdom, Massachusetts Bay Patriots have formed a militia unit at Leicester, Massachusetts Bay. So another 450 men and the Quartermaster Department has opened up and we now have a quest to construct a production building in Hartford. And uh, this one throws people off a little bit because it's not a building. Uh, you build a factory, so I guess it technically is a building, but it's not where you would think it is. So if we go under our construction management tab over here and uh, look at Hartford, Connecticut. Well, we don't have to look at it really. We click on this production button right here and we build in Hartford, Connecticut. And that is what that quest is. So you have infrastructure, which is your construction management where you build. They're technically buildings. When it says agriculture, you're like you're building a farm. When it says in uh, production, you're building a factory. When it says shipbuilding, you're building a uh, like a ship freight or a shipbuilding factory. Mining, you're building mines. And then the recruitment or the military, I imagine you're building like a recruitment officer. Something along those lines. But then here you have actual building slots where you build concrete buildings. Now they're probably made out of uh, lumber and hatch at this point in time or bricks. It could be bricks too, but um, I think to start off, well, I believe there is a quest to build a recruiting house in Hartford, but we're going to build a recruiting house in Hartford anyways. And then in other places, we're going to build some carpenters, uh, carpenter shops because they are very important at getting our economy going. Now, I don't think you can build one. Oh, there we go. It's right in front of my face, right in front of my face. But yeah. We are going to build a few carpenter shops around because that is what gives us the brick or material to build more buildings. And if we can build more buildings, then we can build a better economy. And with a better economy, we can build more buildings and upgrade said buildings. And it's just an amazing cycle of building. If I, uh, you're tired of the word building, well, that is the point of that sentence right there. Um, so we can assign some things. Now, you notice I have changed Samson Burn to James Newsom. You receive all of these militia units, and some of them have really good officers. James Newsom feel like he was wasted on a militia, so he has been upgraded to the Chief Engineer of the Continental Army. Now we need a Quartermaster, and, ooh, Brian Delaney. Man, you look really good. Could choose one of these guys, though, because I don't understand why, but... We can have different types of officers run the Quartermaster Chief, and I think we're going to take Bainton Fitzpatrick. Um, what a amazing name, and we're going to go for research speed. These research speeds really, really help out. They seem like one of the weakest options, but they're actually really, really powerful. And then good old Georgie here is going to research the artillery department, and we are going to fast track it. 
and that will be amazing. Also, I have increased these guys to six company strong, and then the Hartford Militia has some artillery. That's kind of the only way to get artillery early is through your militia. Otherwise, you have to go into the Commander-in-Chief tree and get all the way down to uh, Continental Army. And I think the very first thing we will do is probably try to get... Oh, it's Artemis Ward. Where's Benedict Arnold? Oh, man. See, I, I would like... I would like Benedict Arnold sooner than later, but that requires you to go to Artemis Ward and then Benedict Arnold. They have changed all of these trees since I have last played, and I have kind of looked through them, and there are some spicy ones. Like, you can get um, two new companies right away. Oh, that doesn't even unlock Artillery Company, Skirmisher Company. Where do you unlock Fusiliers? Oh, Fusiliers are all the way down here now. Oh, wow. So... It takes quite a while to get Fusiliers, but um, these research speeds definitely help. I would really like Benedict Arnold as soon as possible because he gives you plus one general limit, and having two generals on the field is better than one, even if it is Benedict Arnold. Don't let that name fool you. He is an amazing commander and much, much needed. April 24th, the British have had enough with this, so they are sending 720 more men to Boston, which... Rather unfortunate, but we have the artillery department, which is amazing. Um, who doesn't like big old guns? And we are just uh, moving some forces about. Hopefully, we'll receive more militia volunteers lately. And we have production enabled, which I probably completely forgot about this earlier. We need to start pumping out civilian muskets. I like pumping out some galloper guns, and then we absolutely need ammunition. Also, I'm going to go broke very quickly because I want a bunch of factories right away. And, you know, we need to assign somebody. Brian Delaney, congrats. You are commander of the artillery. You are now amazing. And that copper seems great, but uh, what do I want to do here? See, Sons of Liberty plus 7.5% research tree is really good. And then we could go into... Artemis Ward and Benedict Arnold, or we could go straight to Artemis Ward and then Benedict Arnold. We really need him ASAP. Um, and then we need these extra units ASAP. And then probably what I would do is Common Defense, Committee of Safety, and then work on grabbing the Fusiliers and we get Baron von Steuben. Oh, and he's not a plus one general anymore. I'm going to have to go through these and look. Oh, Horatio Gates is earlier now, plus one general. So lots of things to consider when you want more generals, where you're going to get them from. Plus five militia company starting stats. That's actually really good. Oh, so now they have uh, research in here that increases your starting stats. I really like that. Oh man, I, this is such a tough decision because this is much better in the long run. But I think, I think we need to rush good old Benny and then go back to this tree here. So we're going to rush Benedict Arnold, then do the Sons of Liberty tree, and then go back to Continental Army, and then go down to Fusiliers. That is the plan, folks. And then, as I said, we are going to go a little bit broke. Um, I want these factories because I really want to start pumping out weapons of mass destruction. Well, I mean, um, civilian muskets to fight the British. Yes, not, not weapons of mass destruction. Um, and then we can have three pound galloper guns, and this is the setup I'm going to go with. And then any extra factories will go into civilian muskets, and that, I, I feel pretty comfortable with that, to be honest. So, we just need to continue moving forward. Now, we have to keep an eye out over here if that 720 will make its way to Middleborough, but we have... Uh, some reinforcements going over to Middleborough. You can see uh, a couple men deserted. Well, not a couple, just one. I feel like they've changed the desertion rates, which is pretty awesome, because I feel like people deserted a lot faster before, and now it's a little bit slower, and I, I greatly appreciate that. And I wonder, uh, Panda Kraut and I were, um, well, maybe just, not just Panda Kraut and I, but uh, there's been many discussions on desertion rates, and it, it was like a big consensus is that if your morale is high, your condition is high, you have provisions and you have ammunition, the the rate at which your troops desert should be pretty low. And that unit did hit red on condition as it was moving, so maybe that triggered 
the men uh, deserting, which I, I think if they actually got that into the game, I think that is a fantastic change. So, um, also, you'll get these global project pools, things like refilling copper, ammunition specialists. These are great. This one you probably will use a lot eventually. I don't know. Depends how many specialists you uh, you burn through early. That's um, just... They, they've changed low-ranking officers to specialists, and uh, you still get low-ranking officers from the specialist pool, but it's not quite like it was before. April 26, we have given the task to produce a hundred muskets, which is pretty good. At least I think that's what it says right here. Um, this actually doesn't tell you what to do, but in the top right hand corner, it says produce hundred muskets, which is going to be very, very easy because we are producing, we have three factories on it. We're producing 30 a day. Might be a little excessive now I think about it. Wonder, problem is we don't have much copper. So increasing our galloper gun production doesn't exactly help us too much. There is a big old giant English Navy. Also why I didn't go with the Navy route this uh, playthrough. They've made it more difficult as they should. I fully believe that they should make it. Oh, they finally took Portsmouth. I was wondering when that was going to happen. I was like, that's been open for a really, really long time. But um, we're probably not going to do a lot of Navy in this playthrough, at least early. That'll probably be much more of a late game thing. 20 over there. That is absolutely ridiculous. And somehow we have lost the factory. Oh, because of Portsmouth. Yes, Portsmouth had a factory over there. So there we go. That's why we lost one of our production uh, places. So we can only do five of five. Oh no, how terrible. April 29th, 450 more brave souls have decided to join the colonial cause. So 454 men down in Hartford, we will move them immediately over to Middleborough. I want to say Middlesbrough, but that's like the British way, and I believe there is an S in England. Let me know how you pronounce this, because I feel like I'm pronouncing it wrong, and you guys are generally pretty good at um, correcting me. Uh, at least that's how it feels on my end. Anyways, um, I am speeding through a lot of the boring stuff, if you haven't noticed. And that'll be the feature of this campaign is me showing off things that I'm doing, but when it's downtime, I'm probably going to uh, fast forward through it. May 1st, 450 more men. I mean, we're not going to complain. And that's how it works at the beginning of the campaign is you just accrue a bunch of militia, which is greatly appreciated because it is actually fairly hard to recruit enough militia early on. So we have blown away all expectations. 100 muskets is nothing compared to the entire British army. However, this is just the beginning. We uh, we were given 40 days. I think it happened in like two and a half days. So five more rep. Never complain there. We are shifting troops about, though, as you can see. And I think I need to recruit some more militia down here. Now I think about it. So that's how... Oh, we don't have officers. That is a problem. I would like officers. And I think we need to fast track this project right here. That is, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to fast track that. We have the reputation to do so. And then we will get back on track with trying to grab good old Benedict Arnold and uh, making sure he stays in blue. I think blue fits him a lot better than red. You can hear a cat in the background. That is Callie. She wishes she was an internet YouTube sensation, um, but she uh, she'll have to wait. She's not old enough yet. That doesn't matter does not matter. Anyways, we will continue fast forwarding through the colonial cause. May 2nd, we did receive our officers and I did change a bunch around. Um, some of these militia regiments get some amazing officers. So uh, if they're just on defense duty, I generally take those away and uh, grab them for either our department chairs or new regiments. And we are building up two militia over here with cannons and we're going to start slowly moving forces out of providence um don't move them too fast british get a little well they can get quite aggressive if they they spot weakness and i'm always terrified of this because these five thousand men in boston could absolutely crush you now that would be no fun if the british were hyper aggressive right from the get-go as these five thousand would beat you yeah, you know, like destroy the entire campaign for you. I do like that the British kind of, you know, they're like, ah, we're going to hold Boston, Salem, and Portsmouth, and Fort Stevens, and they will hold them. 
I mean, if you attack any of those, the British will try to attack them, which um, I, I like early on because, man, you are at disadvantage early on. Anyways, talking of Boston, we have been given the objective to capture Boston. Now, please note, there is no time limit on this. Now, it's probably a good idea to capture Boston sooner rather than later, but there is no time limit on this, so don't feel like you have to capture it right away. In fact, it's probably a bad idea to do so right away, um, as you really don't have the weapons and men to do so. Like, I mean, we could have, what's well, so that's about 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. We could have like 4,500 men attack Boston. Problem is, we have civilian muskets, they have brown vesses, and they have a boatload of cannons. Every single one of those regiments has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven infantry regiments there. Those will all have six or 12 pounders. Boston seems to have 12 pounders. And there's 240 of his majesty's finest horsemen. Uh, unless they're the Scots Greys, then they will just charge at everything. They're still fine horsemen, but they just charge at everything. And uh, the British in this game, they're not the Scots Greys. They, they're a little timid, and sometimes they do not charge at everything, which... Good and bad, but it's an early access game, so we always expect, you know, the devs will uh, balance the AI out as the game continues to move forward. Now, can we... And when you see this yellow one up here, it means that there is something available to fast track, but I'm waiting for Army Innovation 1, which unfortunately has 32 more days, so we'll just kind of speed through this. May 9th, we have a spy in the British Mists. Um, we, ha we, we have a report here where 680 troops are coming to Boston, but we also have the intelligence department research available to us, so we will take that very quick, and, uh, unfortunately it's going to, you know, replace our army innovation one, but we will fast track that just like we have been doing, and we're down to 54 reputation, which isn't bad. I don't like being too high on reputation because... I, I believe there is a thing in the game where the more reputation you have, the less likely you are to earn it. At least that was how it was in earlier builds. I don't know if they changed that, but I like to keep my rep around 50. Um, but w at the early stages of the game, it can get pretty low because I am fast tracking those departments and trying to get to Benedict Arnold ASAP. But otherwise, this is just a waiting game for this part of the map to open up. I don't really attack this part at the beginning. You're more than welcome to try and take Fort Stevens. They'll push troops over this way. Uh, you could try and swing around, take Portsmouth and Salem, and try to crush Boston. It's a possibility, just not how I like to play. May 10th, the Second Continental Congress meets in Philadelphia. Um, I, I would like 400 more civilian muskets. The money, cute, ammo, not really important. Uh, the, the muskets, though, uh, even though we've been pumping out muskets, it's... Where we were down to like 387 muskets, so the, the muskets are very, very important. Also, we can now do our intelligence department, and I believe I have a pretty good officer for him. Oh, we could put... We're going to put this guy in charge for right now, but we might replace him later because it seems like you can use some of the lesser officers for the intelligence department. I don't know if they're like civilians or something like that. I don't know what they represent. And then we're going back onto Army Innovation 1. It's down to 27 days. As soon as it hits 20, we will fast track. That should bring us down to 34-ish. I say ish because it's not always a one-to-one -one thing. It depends on like the officer that you have there and some other factors that I just don't know. Now on May 12th, the Cherokee have offered two fur for 15 horses. And previously, these decisions didn't really matter, but now that you can recruit mercenary Native Americans, and, uh, like, there's the French and the Spanish in the game, too, keeping your relations good with these different factions is really, really important. One, because they will join your side and they will fight against the British, and then, uh, two, uh, they, they won't join the British and fight against you. So, even though this isn't necessarily... The best trade, although furs are really good for selling, I do need our horses later for uh, creating dragoon companies. But we we would like these. Uh, we we would like to decrease the tensions between the USA and the Cherokee Nation. 
Speaking of which, if you go into the Foreign Relations tab, you can see your relationships with all of the different nations. And so France and Spain are clearly the ones that we are doing the best with. Um, we have 21 tension with France. The lower the tension, the better it is. Interesting concept there. Um, I would like this to be a little bit more clear. Maybe there's like a bar that kind of shows you, uh, you know, like good, bad, and the ugly. But tension friendly and then Spanish Empire 16. So confidential. We are best buds. British, um, I don't know how it's even <laughs> that low that it should be, you know, at 100 or something like that. But you can see here, here's the Native Americans and the Iroquois we're doing the best with. Now, later on, we'll be we'll have the chance to hire mercenaries. And I believe under 50, you can recruit the bow guys under, ooh, I don't know, is it under 30 or 40? You can recruit the guys with muskets and under 20, I believe, you can recruit cav. And I would really like some Native American cavalrymen. I think that is a goal in this campaign. I would like to, I would like to play with the natives a lot. So here we go, May 17th, 1775. We can now fast track Army Innovation 1 because it is at 20 days or less. So it says it'll take 20 reputation. Let's spend that. And 55 minus 20 is clearly 37. Awesome. So that's, uh, this is pretty exciting because we will get another good officer in Artemis Ward, and then we will be able to move on to Benedict Arnold. I can't remember if you get one more militia or not. I would like another militia to go sit in Providence. Otherwise, I will probably recruit one. Problem is we don't have any officers at the moment, so that's why Artemis Ward is pretty important because I will probably replace, um, well, he's not an officer per se, but I might replace like James Newsom or something like that or maybe artemis ford can go here no, no, no i don't know but we'll probably replace somebody and grab another officer recruit another militia send that militia up to providence and then move these guys down over to hartford and basically we will have a western theater army moving forward so let's uh, fast track that so may 21st our chief engineer had finished the engineers of the revolution we're just going to go down this tree for more research speed, less mining cost, and then I would like to pump out United States muskets ASAP after that. Um, something to go straight down to Virginia 76s, but there is less of um less of a reason to do so than grabbing the United States muskets. The going from a civilian musket to the US musket is a huge leap in technology. Going from the US musket to the Virginia 76 is kind of like a minor leap. I mean, obviously they're much better, but we might go down to like improved construction, draft stockade, and then maybe like minus costs. That might be a way to do it. Might even go down qualified engineers and then come back for the Virginia 76. Just depends how many US muskets we have produced. Um, I don't think it is worth skipping steps, but you know, there's people play different ways. So um, if you want to, you know, jump straight into the Virginia 76s, be my guest. It's just they, you produce less per day and they take more resources and they cost more money to produce. So just keep that in mind at the early stages of your economy. It's much more difficult for you to uh, complete all of that. So this is where we sit. Um, obviously, revolutionary artillery will be done soon. All these research speeds really add up. I mean, this one says parentheses, this department. Um, same with that one. I think there are some that maybe help out in the overall grand scheme of things. Or I know there's ones where it's like it helps out different departments. So that's always a good thing. I also removed cannons from the production queue and stopped renting one factory because we have no more copper left. So there's no point in attempting to build any cannons when we don't have any copper to build them. And that'll That'll change once the west opens up as uh, we gain access to copper. Okay, May 24th, our artillery chief has completed his project, so we're just going to continue moving down here. Now, this research speed is actually pretty tempting to grab right away. 59 days versus 44 days, but this is plus 5% guns production. Now, I don't know if that means just artillery pieces or if it means all guns overall, so that is 
is very tempting. Uh, plus five percent cover is really, really, really good. And then plus five percent fortification penetration, also good. So I'm kind of tempted actually to grab this research speed because in the long term, having that extra research speed seems a lot better early than the gun production when our production right now is actually pretty crap. So plus five percent on crap is not as good as a plus 7.5 percent in the long run at least that's my thought there so let me know if you would do that different may 28th 1775 the redcoats have raided chelsea creek so 580 new fresh troops arrive i don't know where they arrive from i imagine they're just random what are these 700 guys doing over here that is something we're going to have to you know watch out for and then we might need to slow things down just a tad. Yeah, where are those 700 guys going? Are they going back home? They're just trying to see, uh, you know, if we had men at Providence, I guess. Although I think the I think the AI can see the entire map, that is for sure. He doesn't like George Washington peeking. Um, I wonder if I should increase the size of these militia. That's... Uh, one of one of my concerns here. So let's let's improve the the size of some of these regiments. I have the muskets to do so. I also received uh, two hundred seventy Spanish fifty five. So yay! Those are I mean they're they're a lot better than civilian muskets. I say a lot better. They're actually not that good. Did they increase the stats of civilian muskets? I feel like they did. I mean the melee is really bad although i'm really confused on stats now i thought that was the melee stat maybe they made the stats a little bit more linear so maybe the civilian muskets are nowhere near as bad as they used to be i'm not sure okay june 1st 1775 which is the date we were looking for you receive a report on changes and relations between other nations so i, I believe the spanish are at war with the miamis so the poor poor old Miami's over there but this is a very important day and this will basically be the end of the campaign oh uh, what are the British doing over there I, I believe the British are moving out forces to take a bunch of garrisons I believe that is what they do but the map opens up so basically stage one I kind of build this defensive perimeter around Boston and I build up a force in Hartford the reason I'm doing that is because this force is going to go take Fort Saratoga, Fort Ticonderoga, and Fort Frederick, and we might just bum rush Fort Montgomery with a bunch of militia. That is a possibility there. We'll probably move some of these militia about, and then we get a nice little 450 group of militia over there. We might just move them over to Leicester, or as I said, we might do something over here. Now, the problem is moving washington away from boston it creates a dark zone in boston so this is why i really want uh, benedict arnold but unfortunately he's like 20 days away it says 40 days but as soon as it hits 20 i'm going to fast track we'll go down to 19 rep which is not great but it's uh it's desperately needed to have two generals so you have line of sight in different areas now the reason i want to bum rush fort saratoga fort ticonderoga and fort frederick is because the British get reinforcements and the more these forts are reinforced the harder it's going to be to try and break them so that that is the idea there now some other things I might do is move some of these militia up and as this force moves up through Fort Saratoga we might just disband those militia in areas to essentially provide more manpower for this army as it moves forward but this is going to be our smashing army i think we're going to skip fort montgomery and just go straight to fort saratoga and then once we have accomplished all of that we will probably do something where we amass like i don't know 1050 militia to attack fort montgomery i can't remember if they have a full regiment down there or not but that is the plan i might um see if we can start building up more cannons now um because we also probably have a uh, no we don't have a bunch more production unfortunately um which is a pain in the butt but we'll start building out our infrastructure some more 
But if you look at our mining map, you now see, see that we have copper, we have iron. Iron, if we can take um, Upper New York over here, we can grab some more copper and then basically sweep on down. Now, we'll probably be giving up Falmouth um, because we just can't protect it. As awesome as Falmouth would be, um, there's no point in just losing 300 men and an officer and those weapons. If you disband them, these 300 men um, go back into your recruitment pool and you get all of their weapons and ammo back. Now their recruitment pool goes back over here, so it's not as good, but I just, I don't see them, I mean, maybe... They could try to get down here, but I highly doubt it. I bet they would get captured. So it's just best to get the 300 muskets back off of them. And their officer, who is really good! Some of these militia officers are absurd when you look at them. So I generally uh, swap out some of the militia officers and take them for our better units or for our department chairs. But... That is going to be it for today's episode. Wanted to show you how to get to stage two, how I do it. It's a lot more passive than some people. Some people like really hit Fort Stevens hard and try to do all of that. I really just wait for the West to open because soon you will get a mission for Fort Ticonderoga and there is a timer on it. And if you fail that quest, you do get minus reputation. And I think taking Fort Ticonderoga early is a lot better than taking it late because the more men the British can put in it, the harder it is. So as I said, that is it for today's episode. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of that YouTube jazz. Greatly appreciate you guys. Uh, we hit a thousand subs not too long ago, um, all because of you guys. You guys are awesome. I love all of you. Well, maybe not all of you, but most of you. We'll say 99%. No, I love all of you. You guys are amazing. I don't know exactly how long this campaign will be. The last campaign was 20 episodes and it was a shorter time span than the full US campaign. But I am going to try to do a lot of editing to try and cut down a lot of the chaff out of the episodes. And if we have repetitive battles, I might just show snippets of those battles and show more of the exciting battles, that is for sure. So basically what I'm saying is if we have 50 battles of Portsmouth, I might only show snippets of those battles instead of all 50 battles. But... You guys know the drill as always, guys. Until next time.